What's going on guys? A little bit late right now. So I'm gonna make this very, very short. A little bit late. Thanks, Louie. Um, playing Hustler again on Fridays. Tournaments are not going very well. Uh, and let's just try to run it up because I'm not winning in tournaments. I haven't won in cash games. And uh, this should be a very fun lineup here. Just looking forward to it. Stream's gonna start very soon because I'm late. Like I said, hit that like button for more cash game videos and I'll see you guys uh, on the felt. We're back on another Friday night here at Hustler. I buy in for $100,000 and early on in this session, the table decides we're gonna play the stand-up game the entire day. Essentially, if you're not familiar with the stand-up game, you want to win hands. The last person to win a hand for this specific round pays everyone a bounty. And in this scenario, it's about $300 each person. So let's get into it. About two hours into the stream, I'm a little card dead before picking up eight, seven of clubs in the small blind. The $400 straddle is on to playing one, two, Two, four, and Hank in the hijack opens things up to $1,200. Seeing that I've been pretty inactive so far this entire session, I'm going to three bet and raise this up with a, a fun hand to see a flops with to $5,000. Hank makes the call. He's not going to go anywhere. He likes to battle. And we're off to a flop of ace, jack, three, two diamonds. Ace high boards. I'm the three better. You probably understand the gist that I'm going to be betting this one and I size to 3000 and on this $3,000 bet, Hank makes the call and comes along. So not really loving the development so far in this first hand, but the turn is the 10 of diamonds, which is even worse for me, I think. Uh, I don't have any diamonds. He certainly can have some diamond draws. I decide to give up on this plan and check. Hank is not one to give up. He fires out $11,500, and with my eight high, I'm gonna let this one go, and Hank's gonna win this one with sevens, well played by him. And uh, yeah, I'm down about $15,000 to start this session. I add on for another $100,000 more and going to start playing some more hands after a slow start. And we do it right here in the next one. King five of hearts in the cutoff. No straddle on, so I raise up to $600 and I get Andy, the legend Angie stacks on my left, three betting to $1,800. It's not going to be a great day. It's going to be a fun one to battle with here because Andy's going to be three betting me quite light and doing it quite often this entire session. So I'm going to defend and see a flop. I make the call and the flop comes king, 10, six, rainbow. Hitting top pair is a pretty good situation to be in, I think. I start off with a check and when Andy checks this one back, I'm feeling really comfortable with my hand right now. Wouldn't expect Andy to be checking all the strongest hands he could have, like top pairs or better. And it was going to a turn which is the eight of diamonds. So a uh, card that seems relatively safe for the most part. I'm going to start out and value bet my top pair to 2,500. I think he can have a lot of hands like queens, jacks, or even a 10 that is going to be playing this way. And he does make the call for 2,500. Still thinking I have the best hand. We're going to a river, which is the seven of hearts. So board a little bit more connected. Any nine is a straight. I don't think my opponent's gonna have many of those. And for that reason, I still am confident thinking my top pair is good. I'm gonna throw out $6,500 for value. I want to get called now. Albeit, it does seem a little thin, you know, four line to a straight. I have a really bad top pair, but I think it's worth it at the very least to go for some value. For 6,500 bucks, Andy thinks about it and ends up making the call, which is great news. I scoop this one and win versus ace 10. And it's gonna be a profit of $11,000 for me this hand. Quick interruption in the video because uh, you might be wondering, how the hell do I prepare for these Hustler cash games? And well, let me tell you, I'm playing on WPT Global. I'm playing high stakes cash and it's available for anyone or most people that are not within the US. So if you're living outside the US, you can play on this site as well. We have the good old 9-5 suited. Um, I don't think I'm gonna play this one, but I will check, but I wanna show you guys the lobby first and foremost. Here we are, look at the cash game lobby here. These are the high stakes. These are all the mid stakes games. They're in Chinese Yuan because there's a lot of Chinese whales that play on this site. Like, look at all these games that are full right now. These are 10, 20, 40 Chinese Yuan. Divide that by seven. It's about $1.3 stakes, uh, small blind and uh, $5, $5.5 big blind. So basically two five game. I'm going to fold this one, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this one go with the 9.5 suited, but plenty of games available if you want to hop in. Click the link down in the description below. There's just infinite cash games, honestly, if you look at this. This is a, this is equivalent to like a 50 cent dollar game here. And what do we have? The Doyle. I, I can't play the Doyle, sorry, but RIP to you. But uh, yeah, plenty of games, plenty of options to choose from, micro stakes as well and low stakes, so click the link in the description below. Use the code RAMPAGE and you'll get a $1,200 deposit bonus if you deposit up to 
1200 bucks. So it uh, seems like a no-brainer if you're able to play. Softest cash games available, and I'll see you in the streets. Uh, potentially some meetup games to come uh, on the virtual felt here on this site. So get yourself logged in, make an account, and I'll see you in there. Moving right along, we love seeing these pseudo connectors. I pick up 10 nine of hearts in the big blind. The $400 straddle is on, and we get Brittany calling for 400, then Hank raising to 1600. Not going to go anywhere. Once again, going to take the aggressive route against Hank here. I think that's the best way to approach things. I raise it up again to $7,000. With the $400 straddle on, it really makes the game quite big. So, yeah, for three bet to 7000 and Hank makes the call. So we're going out of position once again in a three bet pot versus Hank, but damn, the flop is 9-4 deuce two hearts. If there was ever a good time to three bet, I think this is a good flop to do it on with 10-9 of hearts. So top pair flush draw. I actually start off with a check here. I think I can do this with a lot of strong hands. Certainly this one is uh, a very strong board for my specific hand and one that I don't think I'll hit too often. Anyways, Hank ends up checking this one back quite wisely as you know, I'm never going to go anywhere. Going to a turn which comes another nine bink city as if I wasn't already confident in the strength of my hand. Now I just have the mega nuts, I think. And for that reason, I actually start off with a check once again. And Hank now decides to fire out $8,000 into the middle. Uh, I've got trips. I've got the flush draw. There's really not a whole lot that I can be afraid of right now. So for $8,000, I am just making the call. I think he's going to have a lot more bluffs than value. And I can always just go for a check raise on the river if my opponent actually has something good. So uh, I make the call for $8,000, hoping to let all his bluffs continue. The river is just overkill, a 10. Yeah, I have the nuts, the full house. It's it's just a great spot to be in. I check once again to my opponent, hoping he will bet. I uh, would love for him to bet any amount that will allow me to be all in for his stack. But after some deliberation, Hank ends up giving up and checks this one back. So I sheepishly show the nuts, 10-9 for the full house and win this one. Moving right along, we enter one of the bigger pots of the night. Uh, there's a $400 straddle on. Hank, once again getting involved, raises it up to $1,200. Jamie on the button, three bets this one to $4,000. And I'm not going anywhere at all. Ace Queen Offsuit is a very powerful hand and certainly one I want to get aggressive with. So I'm going to four bet to $10,000. And here we see Jamie making the call as Hank gets out of the way. So we've got a big pot ballooning up, and we're going to a flop of queen, six, three, two hearts. That's going to be pretty good for me here. With top pair, top kicker, I'm going to bet $7,000 in the middle for value. I mean, it's just a beautiful spot. I just hope my opponent doesn't have kings somehow. And when my opponent makes the call for 7000 loving this situation, until the turn four of hearts. I'm kind of mixed either way about this specific turn card. I don't think I'm going to have any flushes here, although I do have a heart draw. And I think my opponent is going to like this card a lot more than me. So for that reason, I actually decided to check. Think betting or checking is fine. My opponent ends up deciding to check this one back. So we're going to go to a river. The river is the three of spades. So the bottom card pairs, not really a card that I'm very concerned about. So for that reason, having my opponent checked the turn, it's definitely time to bet. I'm going to bet big for value, $22,000 and snippity snap. Oh my God. Jamie snap calls. I show my hand expecting to still have the winner, but oh my goodness, he has king three of diamonds. I lose well over $40,000 this hand. Jashimi decides to needle me saying, welcome to LA. I love it here. I love it in LA. Just want to run a little bit better. Unfortunately for my opponent to hit trips on the river. It would have been cool if really any other card than a three came out, to be honest. But here we are. Uh, stuck piles now, it seems, after this hand. Moving right along, I see my nemesis, Ace Queen, once again in the big blind. So see me raise this to $2,000. It's a massive, massive raise. Uh, she's mainly trying to do this because the stand up game is on, but picking up Ace Queen off suits, it's definitely a good one to defend in the big blind. So I'm going to call for $2,000 facing a 10x raise. We're going to a flop of 9 4 deuce, two hearts, and a spade. I check it over to my opponent here, and Sashimi bets $4,000. It's it's large. This is this is large. It's a pot-sized bet, but uh, ace queen high 
is going to be ahead of a lot of stuff. It's very obvious she's just trying to, you know, play this way for the Nick game. And I just don't believe her right now. So I'm going to float along for $4,000 and we're going to see a turn, which is the Queen of Spades. Lovely. When you make a very loose call on the flop, you drill top pair, top kicker, but no more money gets into the middle here. Action goes check, check. Turn comes the ace of clubs. Oh my goodness. Top two pair. As if I didn't already have the nuts already, now I have the mega nuts with top two pair. I actually decided to check to my opponent here. Uh, clearly the theme of this hand is that she wants to win the pot one way or another. And I'm expecting her to blast off a lot of the time, whether she has a strong hand or she just has bluffs that wants to win. So hitting the ace here, I would assume my opponent's going to bet a lot. I check and she does oblige with a bet of $11,000, pretty chunky sized bets. And now I go into the tank a little bit, trying to figure out how much more money I can get from my opponent. Um, it's clear that she probably isn't going to have a whole lot most of the time. So I decided to go for a very small raise. I decided to make it $26,000, uh, a little bit le less than 3x the bet here. Just trying to get called by a queen or an ace that's really trying to win the, the, the knit button. And she ends up folding. So, you know, very, very favorable, lovely run out for my specific hand here. And I'm happy to take this one down, scooping up another pot. Hoping things are moving into the right direction. I pick up aces. Yeah, aces in the cutoff facing an early position raise to 500. Certainly not going to stand for this small amount. I make it 1800 to go in position and action folds around to sashimi in the big blind. Oh my goodness. What does she have in store for us? It's another raise and this time it's to $7,000. That is correct, my friends. You made it $7,000, the early position player folds, and I have aces. What do I wanna do? I, I actually wanna actually get more money into the middle. Usually I, I don't do this, and you know I would just call the 7,000 a lot of time, but uh, given how the action has played out, and I think this is a very, very good time to put in yet another raise, someone call this a five bet. Yeah, you're supposed to only do this with aces, and uh, here I am. I have. I actually have it this time. So I make it sixteen thousand uh, dollars. Very, very milky sizing. Hoping to just get called by anything that Sashimi could have. Expecting her to actually have a very strong hand here. And for sixteen thousand, she does make the call. So we've got over thirty-two thousand in the middle. We haven't even seen a flop yet. Which comes a beautiful Jack Six Four Rainbow. As dry as it gets as safe as it gets for a hand like aces. My opponent checks, and I'm just gonna start planning on how to get it all in by the river, and I make it $6,500, but I see a snap fold by Sashimi, unfortunately, so not gonna make any more here this hand, but still always nice to pick up over $16,000 uh, with aces. Moving right along, these pots are only going to get bigger and bigger because I pick up Ace King of Diamonds and there's a double straddle on the freaking board. Action folds the scene on in the big line who raises things up to 2,800. I have Ace King of Diamonds. I don't think I need an explanation as to why I decided to make it $8,400. We're already really juicing up the pot here. And oh my goodness, Andy next to act makes it 22,000. Four bets to 22,000 here in position of me. It goes raise, raise, raise in the three consecutive positions. Sinon ends up getting out of the way and now back onto me. I'm out of position against Andy this time. We're playing super deep. He's the only player that covers me. And this is, this is gonna get it really, really big because I think the best option for me now at this point is to put in yet another raise. My, I mean, my hand is just so strong. It's uh, going to be a very big pot if I get called, but I think it's the right play to go against Andy, who's also very capable of making big bluffs and four betting light. So I make it $50,000 because I have a good hand and I think it's good enough for this price. $50,000, Andy ends up making the call. So we have the biggest pot ruining right now. Over $100,000 into the middle. Flop comes, king, 10, seven. Two spades and a club. Here, flopping top pair, top kicker. There's no better feeling thinking that I probably have the best hand in a pot that's going to balloon well over $100,000. So with 100,000 in the middle and you know a very good hand, I decided to start off with a bet of 25,000. A small, I guess, relative to the pot, but not very small in real life standards. Um, small relative to the pot bet, and my opponent comes along for a call. 
Now, things are going to start getting dicey with 150,000 in the middle, and it is the queen of diamonds here. Oh, boy, I am confused. I actually don't know uh, what to do now at this specific stage of the hand because I could have queens, but so does my opponent. He can also have queens. He can have king-queen. He can have ace-jack. He can have lots of hands that beat ace-king and... I'm really on the fence of what I wanted to do, so I take my time because it's a very big decision. And ultimately, I actually decided to bet small here, 35,000. I think that this can accomplish a lot, maybe. Get called by worse hands, um, but for the most part, I'm not really sure how I feel about this hand. It's a very awkward spot, and ace-king is very vulnerable if my opponent were to shove. But Andy goes deep into the tank, and he ends up folding this one. And here we are, um, scooping in a big pot, probably one of the biggest of the nights, winning over $75,000 this specific hand. Uh, this is a wild one, and finally one I finally got unstuck from for the session. Here we are, hoping to steamroll. In the next hand we go, we've got action. $400 straddle is on. The game is just getting quite large, and we get an ungun raise to $1,000. I'm next to act with 6-5 of hearts. Happy to just make the call. I could go either with a raise or call, but here we are. I call, button calls, Hank calls, Jamie calls, five ways to a flop, and it's going to be an action one in 8-4 deuce, two hearts. When action checks to me multi-way, I decided to throw out $2,000 into the field with a monster straw. With a monster draw. Get the button to make the call here, but then the straddler, he check raises to 13,000. Oh my goodness. This is a very large raise, okay? More than 6x my bet here. So it's very, very large. He's out of position. I get to play in position against this player. I have the entire world to go after. So uh, I'm going to try and do that. I make the call. Other opponent folds, and we're now heads up to a turn, which is the ace of clubs. Now, Jamie decides to check it over to me, which I found quite interesting. I, I am pulled in very multiple different directions on what I wanted to do. And at the end of the day, I ultimately wanted to check this one back and see what could happen on the river with my six high. Uh, is that correct? Who knows? But the river is the five of clubs making things extra spicy. A three is a straight. Jamie bets out $6,000, which is... Really not something that I would have expected too much. After checking back the turn, I feel like he could have a random two pair holding. And that's about it, to be honest with you. I'm not sure what my opponent could have, but I find it that he could be folding a lot of stuff. So uh, we're going to attempt one of those very rare river bluff raises. And I make it 26,000. As you can see, Jamie... He is sitting pretty with two pair, the best hand, but is going through his thinking. Granted, four deuce, not a fun spot to be in right now. Any threes a straight, he loses to better two pairs. That could play this way somehow, to be honest. I don't even know if I believe myself, but at the end of the day, for $20,000 more, Jamie is not scared of money. He does flick in a call, and that is painful for us. I lose this one. I lose about $45,000 in this one hand, and uh, I'm not feeling too hot right now anymore. I uh, was feeling good, but now got the breath taken away from me after that failed bluff. All right, here we are moving right along. This hand is a little funky. I went to the bathroom, I missed my blinds, and all of a sudden now I am on the big blind with a $100 straddle in front of me. So we ended up playing one, two, four, but now because I missed it, we're playing 1K in the middle. So that's how this hand starts. Jamie and the cutoff opens things up to 2,500, and I pick up ace, deuce of hearts, suited eight, wheel ace, happy to see a flop with. So we're going to a flop of eight, five, three. I check into my opponent, and he fires out $3,000 here. And I could certainly go one of two ways, I think, which is a check raise, or it could be a call. And, you know, for one reason or another, I decided to just call this one. So why not? We're going to see a turn. If pot is friendly enough, the turn is the ace of spades, giving me top pair along with my flush draw and definitely a card that I love. I check it over to my opponent again, and this time he fires out 5,000, which is a little bit of a weird bet, a little bit smaller compared to the size of the pot from his flop bets. But I'm never folding top pair. Um, I just hope another spade doesn't come. So happy to call the 5,000 and we're going to a river, which is the six of diamonds. Not really a car that changes much at all. So I check it over to him and hoping to see a check back, but he does not oblige, unfortunately, and fires $15,000. 
I'm a little annoyed, you know, the day hasn't necessarily been going perfect for me. I'm running into some spots. So I snap call and muck immediately as he shows the ace eight. Ooh, for one reason or another, this is the hand that kind of set me off a world of tilt. I haven't been able to win many pots. I keep losing to this one specific person and uh, it's getting a little frustrating and we're moving on to a premium hand. I finally looked down at near the end of the night. Pocket queens in the small blind. $400 straddle is on as always and we get Jamie once again raising to $1,000. Uh, yeah, we're going to find a way to make this pot bigger. So I decided to three bet to 4,500 and my opponent makes the call in position as I assume he would because I'm losing a lot of pots to him. Anyways, we're going to a flop of ace, jack, seven, rainbow, which is just never really a great sign. I lose to jacks, I lose to an ace, but still, I think I have to bet. You know, I'm going to try to be at value, bluff, who knows at this point, but I make it 2400 and for 2400 bucks, my opponent thinks it's a fair price and calls. So going to a turn now, which is the deuce of spades, it brings in a backdoor flush draw. I don't love my situation anymore with just pocket queens, is there ever a world that it goes check, check? I start to check it over to my opponent, and now my opponent fires out $3,000, which is a very rather interesting sized bet. Uh, this is certainly one that is annoying for my specific hand, and I could fold sometimes, but I'm too stuck to do that. I flick in 3000 and we're going to a river, which is the four of hearts. Not a whole lot really changes or gets there, and I check it to my opponent once again now, hoping he can finally check back, but he throws out $12,000. Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm too stuck to fold. What's another 12K to what I'm down today? I make the call and scoop somehow. My opponent shows a bluff, and uh, I make over $20,000 this hand. So finally won a decent sized pot versus Jamie. And this hand actually puts me into the black. At the end of the stream, I am now up a little over $7,000. And that is not where this session ends, folks. We're actually going to play post-stream for a little bit, about 30 or 40 minutes of post-stream action. And we're playing three-handed poker. Myself, Jamie, and Andy. We're playing 200 400 with a $400 big blind ante. And here we are. Jamie on the button raises things up to $1,000 shorthanded. I pick up ace, queen of clubs, and certainly going to put in a raise because it's a good hand, and I make it $4,500. He's playing super deep. He covers me. I'm trying to get some of my money back from him. And here we go. Big blind fold, and now the button player, very aggressive, makes it $11,000, putting in yet another raise preflop. And I'm not going to go anywhere, to be honest with you. Uh, never thought about folding this hand. It's way too good. It plays too well. Let's see a flop, which comes three, four, five rainbow. Not a club out there, unfortunately. So no backdoor flush draw, but I do have a straight draw. Things could get pretty spicy here, but unfortunately action goes check, check. It's not a whole lot going on here. The turn is the nine of clubs here, bringing in a full rainbow. I check once again, although I did think about betting here for one reason or another. Uh, I decided to check with my ace high, and now my opponent fires out a delayed C bet of 12,000 bucks. Hmm, I don't think I'm ever allowed to fold here, mainly because I do have a straight draw. Ace, queen, high is sometimes the best hand. So I'm never going to be folding. I make the call as we're playing three-handed, and we're going to a river, which is the ace of diamonds, binking top pair. And for one reason or another, somehow, when I check into my opponent, he checks this back with ace, 10? Oh my goodness, he certainly soul read me. So definitely not going to get any more value on this river, but it is nice to win this one three-handed after the stream has ended. Nice to capture this one for you guys, and that's the last significant hand of this night. We're going to go to the outro to go over some numbers, and thanks for following along. All right, uh, just wrapping things up. We're here uh, just, you know, game's over, all that stuff. Fuck, man, what an eventful stream. A lot of ups and downs, played a lot of hands, battled a lot. We were pretty short-handed, so definitely due to collide, maybe unnecessarily. I, I need to fight this bug where I just want to bluff every time. My bluffs aren't working. So yeah, end of the day, I was in for a lot. The game was fucking massive. <laughs> we ended up playing post-stream, battled a little bit too. Nice to win that last hand to basically get me unstuck, which is crazy. I was in the game for $200,000 and I cashed out for an uh, even number of 217000 So $17,000 profit, uh, happy with it, uh, albeit pretty small given the size of the game, given the swings, given the pots that we're playing. 
definitely dusted off multiple tens of thousands of dollars through bluffs, uh, some light calls. Anyways, it's good to at least feel a little bit of momentum uh, to book a win, albeit a small one for the game. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we're trending in the right direction. Happy I won, happy I survived this game. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully more of these big cash games to come. Just glad I survived. Nice to rebound, win 17,000 after losing over 200,000 the night before, uh, the last the last video. But thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time. Leave a like, peace.